Jesus Calls International. This ministry brings hope and comfort to millions of people, resulting in thousands finding the Lord Jesus as the Savior of their lives. Your sorrow will turn into joy. The Lord chose Dr. Paul Denikrin, co-founder of the Jesus Calls Ministries when he was in the days of his youth. His public meetings attract 200,000 to 500,000 in a single service. We are here to pray for you and pray with you. Dr. Paul has established Jesus Calls prayer towers all over the world through which people find divine comfort and peace. Keep the faith because God wants to do something awesome for you today. Dr. Paul is Chancellor of Corunya University. Corunya University do research finding products to solve the problems of humanity. Dr. Paul also runs an organization called Sisha, which is the social service wing of Jesus Calls Ministry. It's a outreach to care for poor young people. The women, the destitutes, come, let's give life. Together, we are here to pray in one accord that this blessing of the best of God shall come upon you. Your breakthrough is on the way. Just keep believing and pray with us. This is Jesus Calls International. Dear friends, it's such a joy for us to meet you from Jerusalem. Today is a great day as we stand on this ground where Jesus walked, prayed, cried, shed his blood for all of us to receive redemption and to be redeemed of curses and rose up from here. Isn't a heart so thrilled and filled with the resurrection power of Christ. There is life in this place. <laughs> Whenever we come to this place, we feel like there is full of His presence in this place. Mm. <laughs> and especially our prayer tower, which is right here. Praise the Lord. Right behind this dome, as you look back, we see the huge building, the tallest building in Jerusalem. And that's where our prayer tower stands. And from there, 24 hours, prayers are being offered for the peace of Jerusalem. And prayers are offered prophetically for kings, peoples, nations, and languages. Yes, indeed, that's a beautiful move of God that we have had. And especially the Lord was so delighted to have his father's house here, which he called the temple of Solomon as his father's house. When he was alive in this world, when he entered into the temple, he said, my house will be a house of prayer for all nations. And it's truly now happening in our prayer tower. People from all over the world, they come. People of all languages, they come and pray. Not only they pray, but they are praying and prophesying mm -hmm. in this place. As a group, they gather together and they are praying for all nations. And the Lord should be pleased to be there saying, this is my house, my mm -hmm. house today. Of course, the Solomon's temple is not there. It's empty. As we see it right now, it's totally empty. And we see only a flat land there. But then, right behind it is the Lord's Father's house, <laughs> the prayer tower, where prayers are offered 24 hours and we pray for the nations and prophesy to the nations. I'm sure the Lord is pleased. Thank you, my friends, for praying for this prayer tower to be established. And God has been gracious to make this provision. And very soon we are looking for a place which we could buy to house the prayer intercessors. In Jerusalem, the cost of the stay is so expensive. So if people have to stay for a month, two months, three months, and pray at this prayer tower from across the world as people come, they don't have a place to stay. So we need a place for them to stay. And I pray that God will give us the grace to establish the 
staying place mm -hmm. for people to come and pray in the prayer tower. Mm -hmm. And may God bless you. Let's listen to a beautiful Christmas song right now as we go into this program to receive God's blessing. Mary's born child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. And man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. My precious friend, welcome back. God bless you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the song. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Today we are going to talk about the Virgin Mary. Somebody visited her. Mm. <laughs> you read about it in Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. The angel Gabriel came from God. God sent him to marry the virgin. To a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mm. 
Mary was greatly troubled at his word and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. <laughs> she was troubled, greatly troubled, mm. because no one in this world would bless another person. Mm. Everyone would talk about themselves. I am great, I am this, I am that. She had never heard somebody coming and saying, mm. Mary, you are greatly favored. God is with you. How wonderful it is to hear that. Even as we celebrate Christmas, this message is coming to you today. God is sending not just an angel, but his own word saying, my daughter, my son, you are highly favored. You have my favor. You have the favor of the almighty God. As you have my favor, I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. Yes, God has shown you favor and he is with you. Let not your heart be troubled. Even today, my friends, the same angel is bringing this good news to you. You see, whenever the angels appeared, as people were praying in Daniel 9.23, the angel appeared and said to Daniel, saying, you are greatly beloved. You're a greatly beloved person of the Lord. That's what the angels come and say. Even before he could pray, the word came to him. And the answer was given from heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the heart of God. You should be highly favored. You are not to be dumped. You're not to be walked over. You're not to be forgotten. God says, you are highly favored because you have given your heart to me. Well, Mary had a mission to perform when the angel came and said, you are God's favored child and God is with you. She had to give her womb, a virgin womb, which had never known a man, to God. She had to give her virgin womb to God. She had no way to ask, how can this happen? Uh, what will people say and so on? She just had to trust God and say, I am the handmaiden of God. And she did it. When God says, you are highly favored, I am with you. God expects something from you. God expects your heart. God expects your body to be offered as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Holy and acceptable to God. That's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Mary gave her virgin womb. Today, God expects you to give your body as a holy sacrifice. Not to allow any pleasures of the world, sin of the world, and even the worries of the world in your body, in my body. He wants only to have Jesus in us. Jesus in us. Jesus wants to be born. And only Jesus wants to be born. Would you do that? Would you command your bodies as a living sacrifice and have Jesus in you, Jesus in you. He calls you his highly favored child and he is with you. Open your heart and surrender. If there's anything lacking, ask him to wash you with his blood and be cleansed and become a body which carries Jesus. Come, let's listen to a beautiful song. Did 
Welcome back, dear friends. And as we are meditating on Christmas and receiving the blessings of the joy of Christmas, there was another man who was met by an angel. You read about him in Matthew 1 and verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with the child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Mm, divorce her quietly. Mm. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Ah, this is fantastic. Joseph was a righteous man, and he was planning secretly to divorce his wife, because she had a child before they came together physically. Well, when he was considering this, or even thinking about this in his mind, the Lord sent an angel. The Lord is looking into the thoughts of the righteous. And he would never allow them to do anything in the flesh. He would never allow them to do anything in the flesh. Though he was a righteous man, and what he was going to do was natural. Secretly, he wanted to take her out of his life. Secretly, he didn't want to have public disgrace. He was righteous. What he was going to do was a righteous act. But God was looking into his mind, his thoughts, and stopped him from doing things of his own and made him do the plan of God or enter into the plan of God. How marvelous the Lord is looking into our thoughts and he would never allow us to do anything in our flesh. How righteous we may be, he will never allow us to do anything in our flesh. Even though we may have our own thoughts, He sends an angel and leads us into His plan, His thoughts. We may be saying, I'm a small person, but yet the Lord is thinking about us. David said, Lord, I am poor and needy, but, oh Lord, you are thinking about me. <laughs> Joshua said, my family is the least. Gideon said, my family is the least. 
Saul said, my family is the least. But God was thinking about them and knew their thoughts and took them from their thoughts into his thoughts. Even though it was a difficult situation for Joseph when he had to move from his thoughts to God's thoughts, he would have come under disgrace. He would have been secretly um, put into trouble saying that he has encouraged Mary or they had a secret affair or whatever it is because he accepted her. But yet he did not bother. He said, if I accept God's will, God will protect my family life. God will protect my family life. God will honor me in my family life. And the Holy Spirit led him to obey the thoughts of God. My friend, the thoughts of God are much higher than your thoughts. You may make plans, but God's plans are much higher. He will take you into his plans and he will bring forth Jesus through you. Through all the plans God has for your personal life, for your family life, he will bring Jesus through you. Would you surrender yourself to the plan of God, to the will of God? You will rise up and God's plan will come into your family, will enjoy your family life. And the same angel appeared to the shepherds and they were in darkness in the night and he gave them a word saying, a savior is born for you in Bethlehem. And they received that word of joy, great joy. But they didn't sit there, they went to see Jesus, the source of joy. Many times we stop with getting the word of joy. We go to worship, we hear the word of God, we hear prophecies, we are happy. But then they moved from the message of joy into the source of joy. They moved and it's so close. When the message of joy comes, Jesus is so close. When the prophecy comes, Jesus is so close. So you, can, you have to move from that prophecy and claim Jesus. The two, they went hurriedly to look at Jesus. Amen. <laughs> so when the prophecy comes, we have to hurry Immediately, yeah. to get that word fulfilled through Jesus or receive Jesus. Immediately obey. Amen. And they went and told everybody that message of joy. <laughs> so even now, there's going to be joy in your heart, joy in your life. Shall we pray together? Father, as angels visited Mary, Joseph and the shepherds and brought God great joy to them. Lord, today, as you have sent your word to us, even now, we surrender our bodies as a sacrifice to you for you to be born in us. Lord, as Joseph did, we surrender our will to you, our plans to you, for your plans to be fulfilled in our lives. Lord, as the shepherds did, as we hear your word of joy, your commitments, help us to move to you, to you to fulfill your will. Come hurriedly and see you, Lord, and carry you to the world. Bring great joy to the world by taking the message of Jesus. Give us that joy this Christmas and bless thy children with that joy, even as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all abundantly. Wish you a very merry, joyous Christmas. Hey guys, me and Sweetie wanted to catch you before this uh, telecast ended. Uh, I, I know mom and dad spoke to you, mom and dad wished you, but we cannot leave you. Uh, so we're here to wish you were just about to go into a Thanksgiving service. Uh, so, um, well, we're gonna thank God for you. We're gonna thank God for what you've done this whole year. And we know that when we give thanks, the blessings multiply. The talent multiplies, the anointing multiplies, and we're going to pray that it multiplies upon you, even during uh, this Christmas season, and it's going to multiply upon you, your family, and your children also. That's our prayer. Thank you so much for all your heart and all your work that you put in to grow the kingdom of God in this world. Sweetie? We thank you for praying for millions of people through Jesus Calls, and we are thankful for all the young people who pray through Jesus Calls for many people 
to be blessed and to be healed and to be delivered. And um, we love you so much. Thank you. You put us here, and uh, for that, I know whenever God sees us up on the stage or whenever God moves through us, He will remember you and your family as well. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless you. Jesus Calls International has a deep burden for the brokenhearted and is always praying for God's wonderful works and bringing smiles back to all people. If you have received the touch of God through this program, let us know so we can glorify God together. Please write your prayer request to Dr. Paul Denikerin and his family, and they will pray for you. You can also look forward to a reply from the Denikerins as they personally respond to your email. Email your prayer needs to prayers at jesuscalls.com. Home Blessed Home by the Denikerins. This resource gives a clear picture of how the family should be united in Christ, keeping Him in the midst of everything we do and making the family of God's divine place of dwelling. This splendid resource by the Denikrins will be your gift from Dr. Paul for your love offering of $25 or more to Jesus Calls International. Send your contributions to Jesus Calls International, 8855 North Stemmons Freeway, Dallas, Texas, 75247, or contribute online at www.jesuscalls.com. If you want to know more about Jesus Calls International, visit our website, jesuscalls.com. Click and surf through the various sections for children, youth, and for women. You will find daily promise verses, messages by the Denikrins, ministry activities, up and coming events, and much more. You can also find all our products in the Resource Center. Visit JesusCalls.com. Click and get into God's presence.